Join Archbishop Dominica Bierman in Global Awakening. Shalom, I'm standing right here in Helsinki, the capital of Finland, and I'm about to go into the Parliament of Finland to have a special meeting with some members of Parliament, majorly Christians, that have been lobbying for Israel. So accompany me as I go in there to speak about my subject of sheep nations representing the United Nations for Israel. Welcome. Okay. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Shalom. Hello. Shalom. How are you? Pleased I'm to meet you. I'm Archbishop Dominica Bierman. Good to meet you. Also. I'm Rabbi Brook, and you look just like your picture. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Hello. I'm Jan. Okay. And in Isaiah 60, it says, Darkness shall cover the world, and deep darkness the people, but the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon you. So this is the hope part. The hope part is that at the time when darkness is very, very strong and very deep, there is going to be, well, this is about Israel. Yes, it's about Jerusalem. Isaiah 60 is about Israel and Jerusalem. When it says, Arise and shine for your light has come, is Israel and Jerusalem. But at the time of the rising of Israel, which we have entered into now, because this, this moving of the embassies, you understand, there is a wind of favor towards Israel right now. Oh yes, they are saying many things in the news and how we are doing these terrible things which are absolute big time lies. But there is this wind of favor towards Israel. Three embassies in the last week. We were there for the 14th of May at the Embassy of the United States. We left the country as the Embassy of Guatemala on the 16th of May was put there. And now the Embassy of Paraguay, if I'm not mistaken, was the 18th of May. So we have, in less than one week, we have three embassies that just made the move to Israel. And you know, it's very interesting because the Bible says that let every word be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. So we can have three witnesses right now that are in the holy city of Jerusalem and they have taken the turn. And I know that right now it doesn't look feasible for Finland. But let me tell you something, that it is possible. I truly believe it is possible, but there has to be something happening here that has to be more spiritual first so that the natural can come. There has to be an anointing. Uh, you, you understand what an anointing is, of course. There has to be an anointing. There has to be some divine authority, something that can break through the spiritual powers and principalities that have kept this nation in bondage. Because what really happens here is that of our battle, and your battle, you're battling in, in politics, but your battle, even though you are a politician, your battle is not against flesh and blood. It's not against the people. Uh, even though it's against the policies and things like that, really behind the policies there are demons or angels, <laughs> depending which policy. And so I believe that there is a way to turn your nation around. And I don't believe that there is any better group to connect with than you to be able to do something about it, even if it begins with an act of repentance where the friends of Israel within the Finnish parliament can stand and Christians from the nations and the different Christian groups from the nations can join and ask forgiveness from the Father and we can lift up that prayer before the Almighty and then as Jews come here and begin to stand in intercession and in the gap and release mercy. Because beloved ones, if we don't release mercy in this nation, as it is right now, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good because in Joel chapter 3 it says, at that time, 
when I, ha I have favor on Jerusalem, when he restores favor of Jerusalem, I will put all of the nations in the Valley of Judgment. And I will put them there because they have divided my land. Shalom from Jerusalem, Israel. We love you. And we want you to know God loves all the nations of the world. But guess what? When any nation does something against Israel, God gets angry. Some people call it Mother Nature, but we call it Father God. Some people say there's global warmings, but we say there's global warnings. If you read the book, uh, Stormy Weather, it will open your eyes as to what happens to every nation when they do something against Israel. Within 24 hours, God answers with a natural destruction. Read Stormy Weather, it will open your eyes. And now let's return to Global Awakening with Archbishop Dominica Bierman. Now, beloved, we are right now at the time of favor to Zion. There's winds of favor happening, and there will be more winds of favor. But this is just the beginning of a big overturning. I don't know how long. It may be very short-lived. It may be only just short-lived enough for that trumpet to blow and those that are faithful to him to be taken up. And, and, but there is going to be this time of favor to Zion. And during this time that there is this favor of Zion, he's already putting the nations in the Valley of Judgment. Unfortunately, Finland is right now there with the other nations because it's not doing the right thing concerning Israel. That's, that's unfortunate, but I believe it can be changed. And that's the point here. It's, I believe it can be changed. We wouldn't be here speaking if there was any hope. If there is no hope, what a waste of time. But if there is hope and there is something that can be done, then we can team up maybe and do something about it. The last thing is Isaiah 34. It's a very serious scripture. Most people have never read it. Isaiah 34 says, Come near, ye nations, to hear, and hearken, you people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He has utterly destroyed them. He has delivered them to the slaughter. When I read those scriptures at the beginning, I said to myself, why did you do this? Because he says he has already done it. Not he will do it, he has done it. And then we're going to have to, it's a very, very graphic description of how the slaughter is going to be. But I'm going to go to verse 8. Why is this happening? It is, for, it is the day of Adonai's vengeance, or Yahweh's vengeance, the Lord's vengeance, and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. In other words, we see that all this judgment on the nation is happening because they have made his plan to restore Israel a matter of controversy. I'm afraid that this is already happening in the nations with the global, famous global warming, but it's global warning and other things like that. But this is even an escalation from this place. My prayer for Finland is that he will be able to find one person. Because in Ezekiel 22, he says that he looked for one. Amazing that he never said he looked for a thousand of them. He said he looked for one to stand in the gap to make up the hedge for the land that he may not destroy it. Mm -hmm. But he found none. But in this case, I praise God that we are with you here because I believe he has found some. And I just want to leave you with this thought in your mind. And you can ask me as many questions as you want to. Um, but with this thought in your mind, how about if we begin the overturning of this nation by 
doing Second Chronicles 714 in a public way, not hidden somewhere where nobody can see it, but in a place where people can join from everywhere. And we begin to see the air changing in this nation so that he can bring up his people to be in the government of Finland to make the decisions. That's my question. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the beautiful uh, message. And, and uh, I think that uh, there might be questions to, to, to ask. Uh, ju just briefly, I don't know if you ever saw the pro program that was um, uh, broadcasted in, in Israel uh, a couple of years ago when there was an interview with me about how why I uh, stand by Israel and uh, uh, why do we do the work for Israel from, from these northern countries. And uh, I would say like this that I, I guess that each one of us here today, we, we, have, been, we have been raised up in, in our churches and we have heard the, the Bible stories and uh, all those, most of the places that you quote, quoted from the Bible sounded familiar, especially for me because I have, I think I have read, even, uh, read the, the English Bible more than the Swedish one because I sometimes used mm -hmm. to translate in the congregation. So these, these uh, texts were very familiar to me and I think that we need also to, to uh, look upon these places in the Bible from with the spiritual eye, exactly. <laughs> uh, which goes far beyond uh, our mind exactly. and, and understanding. But then when it comes to, do, to the work here in the parliament, I don't know whether it is the right way to do the things, but uh, at least I personally, and I think most of us, we, uh, we know that uh, when, we, when we talk about um, Israel and uh, the future of Israel and uh, when we defend Israel, uh, sometimes it's, it's hard to to use the Bible in the parliament uh, and argumenting from, from uh, the Bible side. So, uh, but when it comes to defending Israel, I think that we have enough of secular arguments why to defend Israel. First of all, it's, it's the only democratic country in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. They have 20, 21 or 22 Arabic neighbor countries where we can see that, uh, that the democratic system is, is working at all. Um, mostly we can talk about the dictature, <laughs> as we, at least in sw Swedish we use that word. Uh, so this is the first thing that why we can de defend Israel. And the other thing is that we know from the history, we know that this land was promised for, <laughs> for uh, people from Israel and, and the Jewish were given the country uh, 1948 to be, become their new homeland. Uh, then what brings us to a very challenging point is when, when you begin to, to debate then uh, who has the right to the country and should it be divided or not and where should the borders be. Then it's very difficult because uh, uh, depending on what is your political opinion, you can find different or you are looking for different facts. And if you have the wrong facts, in the debate, then we can. It goes to a point that we can see the result of today, when when people don't know what was the contract that was signed in San Remo, what was the uh, contract uh, 1922, and what was the contract that was signed 1948, and what happened today after when when David Ben Gurion announced uh, that Israel will become uh, got their independence. So uh, it's, it's kind of challenging all the time to, to go on with the political debate. But, but then I come back to the, from where I started. As I said, most of us, we have been raised up in Christian churches and we have heard the, the, the message. We know, know uh, uh, much about the, the old history about Israel. Uh, then we can ask, have our churches of today, have they been awake? Have they been taking care of the task and the duty to, to proclaim a clear word? That's a good question. So I think that we all need to, to consider and think about this.
that we are celebrating 70 years since the establishing of the State of Israel and the opening of the United States Embassy, absolutely a historical time. And so we can commemorate and have a memento that can we can show to our grandchildren, to our great-grandchildren, and forever we can have it as an heirloom. There is this new shofar that has been manufactured in Israel for the 70th. It has the letter 70 there and Israel and it is covered with sterling silver. It's got a stamp of sterling silver on it. It's absolutely gorgeous. It blows great. I'm going to ask Rabbi to blow it and you will see that it, though it is small, it blows great. You can have it in your purse. You can take it on a mission or you can have it anywhere displaying it for all generations to come. So don't miss your shofar. I don't know how many there is going to be that they're going to make. You order yours today. Go ahead. <laughs> Let's return to Global Awakening with Archbishop Dominika Bierman. I also I was raised up in a church and um, actually I was preaching in my church just now on the Pentecostal Sunday. And um, in my preaching I was touching something, what you just said, but um, about the restoring of the Israel as a nation and also how it's going to influence all the other nations. And so, for me, your preaching was quite familiar. <laughs> thank you. I'm very happy that, that thank you, Sari. Um, what you said about fighting through the secular, mm -hmm. the overturning in America didn't happen right that way. It happened because the Christians rose up inside of America. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, indeed. I and agree they, with that. But they brought the Bible to the scene. They brought the word to the scene. In fact, the president began to be completely surrounded by very serious ministers. One of them even, uh, you know, uh, a messianic Jewish one as well. And, but many, many that surrounded him. Um, I'm going to say something that maybe may, si sa may sound a little, maybe cheeky, but that's fine. We are all brothers and sisters. Mm. Um, has really the secular style humanistic agenda been working for Finland? You see, I believe that you all have given up a lot of territory here. And that is the time to take territory back. Uh, because the more territory that you give to the humanistic agenda or play the game their way, the least uh, effect that we're going to have because then there will be no power. Unless we bring God on the scene and the Bible on the scene, in whatever way, it's just not going to happen. The humanistic agenda will not do it. Because this is not a political issue, this is a biblical issue. When President George W. Bush was about to be elected, do you remember how his votes were stuck on the Supreme Court? Mm -hmm. And the Lord sent me to the Congress and to the House at that time, and the doors opened for me to pray at the chapel of the congressmen. They don't allow anybody to pray there, but I was accompanied. And I remember that I knelt there because he told me, I want you as an Israeli to choose and to vote President Bush to the presidency. And I knelt there and I began to pray. And the father said to me, if President Bush does biblical politics concerning Israel, this is exactly the word that he said, then he will be the most blessed president that America's ever had. But if he doesn't, there will be a judgment. And we all know what happened afterwards. He did not do biblical politics concerning Israel because continued on the Oslo Accords and the division of the land. And he was seriously, judgment fell seriously during his cadence. I sent that word far and wide. It arrived to the Congress. It arrived everywhere. We need to realize here that it doesn't matter how much the humanistic agenda wants us to play their game. It's not going to work. What's going to work is what God decided. And if there is nobody inside of the parliament that can say, excuse me, with all due respect, secular or not secular, this is what the book says, and begin to ruffle feathers here and break through and ruffling feathers, it's not going to happen, my friend. It's not going to happen. So my prayer for you all in this place 
is that you will not be so nice. Is that, you know, I always say um, the first disciples of Yeshua were not good Christ or nice Christians, they were mean Jews. <laughs> and I, I pray in the name of Yeshua for every one of you that you will get a hump of the lion from the tribe of Judah to be able to stand. In